right on two classes uh we're continuing on with our uh, unit of solving quadratics um this one we're going to be doing um probably the quickest um and i think easiest if we're good at factoring um the, the factoring by solving or excuse me solve by factoring so we're going to factor the quadratic and then solve it from there before we get into the factoring part let's talk about what's called the zero product property we're going to be using this a lot to solve uh, quadratics. Um, so what we have here, we have two binomials. If you look at this, this is a factored quadratic. All right. It's, you know, normally have a trinomial. Now we got the product two binomials. So this is a quadratic in its factored form. Um, so practice solving from here. And what we do is called the zero product property. Since this quantity here, um, this quantity here is equal to zero, that means one or both of them have to be equal to zero. What we do is we separate these out and set each factor, each binomial there, equal to zero. And then you solve each individually. Uh, this one is a simple two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract two. I get 7x is equal to negative two. And then divide by seven. So I get x is equal to negative two sevenths or over here, or excuse me, and then over here, solve this one. I subtract six, I get X is equal to negative six. I have my two solutions, X is negative six, or it is negative two sevenths. That's it, all right? Set each binomial, each factor in there equal to zero and then solve individually. Um, you're going to skip the other examples of those, move on to uh, factoring. So here we have x squared minus 8x equals 0. This one, what we're going to do first is factor by using a GCF. Um, we can expand this if you need to. So x expands to x times x minus uh, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 and then times x. Uh, this one's easy. You could probably do it in your head um, if you were expanding it. Uh, but you can see they just both have an X here. So I'm going to pull out one X, cross it out. And so rewrite it as the factor. So I get X times X minus, uh, that's eight is equal to zero. So now I'm going to separate this out. So X is equal to zero or X minus eight is equal to zero. So once we have it in factor form, separate it and then use the zero product property. This one's done. Don't need to do anything with that. X equal to zero. Um, nothing to solve there here. All I need to do is add eight. And so I get X is equal to a positive eight. So my two solutions, X is zero or X is eight. We're done with that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna skip those. Um, to mention the different ways of asking to, to solve a quadratic equation. We talked about this a little bit. I'll just say solve, uh, find the zeros or find the roots. Um, say find the zeros because if you look at the graph, if you remember if you go back to our graphing lesson, uh, the graph, the, the solution to a quadratic equation is where uh, the graph crosses the x-axis, where the x uh, value is um, where the quadratic is equal to zero. So where it uh, crosses the x-axis. Why that says find the zeros and then find the roots because you can also solve some of them by uh, square root. All right, moving on. Um, here we're going to factor this. We need to factor this one using an x factor. So remember the x factor, um, the last number goes on top, middle number goes on bottom. Then I need to find. Uh, two numbers that multiply to positive six, add to negative five. That's going to be negative two and negative three. All right, so those are my factors. So it's going to be X minus two times X minus three is equal to zero. And then from here, I can separate this out. X minus two is equal to zero or X minus three is equal to zero. Uh, from there, <laughs> solve each individually. So add two. So I get X is equal to two. Um, and then this one over here, I'm gonna add three. 
to both sides. So then X is equal to three. So there you go. My two solutions on this one, X is either two or it's three. Um, there's a little bit of a shortcut. If you start noticing a pattern, you're welcome to use a shortcut, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Too bad. All right. Uh, normally, I, uh, yeah, I'll do this one because it's uh, just that extra step um, to solving this one. So I'm going to still find the roots of this one. Uh, since it has a number in front of the x squared, I need to multiply the first and last number together. Remember, this is a negative 5. So 7 times negative 5 is negative... Uh, 35, positive 2 at the bottom. There are factors of negative 35 that add to 2. Um, that's going to be a positive 7, negative 5. Remember, that's just a guess and check process. Uh, if you need a reminder of how to do that, um, make sure you can go back and, and check out the, the factoring video. Um, but here, since uh, we multiplied by 7 to get the top number, normally it's just the last number, but since we multiplied that last number by 7 to get the top, we need to divide the 7 back out. So I'm going to divide both of those by 7. Um, and then from here, reduce where possible. Uh, 7 over 7, that's nice. It reduces to 1. All right. So this is just going to be x plus 1. This factor over here, uh, if you remember, the bottom number, the 7, gets attached to the x, and then it's going to be minus 5 equal to 0. And now at the point where we can use that zero product property, separate them out. So x plus 1 is equal to 0. 7x minus 5 is equal to 0. Uh, and then solve. So subtract 1. You get uh, x is equal to negative 1. Over here, I need to uh, add 5 to both sides. So I get 7x is equal to a positive 5. And then divide by 7. So on that one, it's going to be x is equal to a positive 5 7 so x is negative 1 or positive 5 sevenths. Again, there's a little bit of a shortcut. And if you want to use it, you are welcome to. But again, I'm not going to tell you that. Um, that's the same type of problem. We're going to move on. So here, uh, this is different. If you look, uh, this isn't equal to 0. So our first step that we need to do is make sure everything is on one side of the equation and equal to 0 before we solve. So I need to add 3 both sides. I'm going to get this quadratic in standard form. Where all terms are on one side uh, and it's equal to zero. So it's not 4x plus 3. It's not 7x, right? It's um, Those aren't like terms, so you just put a plus 3 at the end. Uh, and then from here, factor it uh, using the x factor. Um, nothing in front of the x squared, so I just put that top number or the last number on top. 4 goes in the middle, factors of 3 that add to 4, that's just 3 and 1. So my factors are x plus 3 times x plus 1. And then once you have the factors, not equal to 1, it's equal to 0. Set them both equal to 0 and then solve each of those individually. So subtract 3, you get uh, x is equal to negative 3. Over here, subtract 1. x is equal to negative 1. <clears throat> and there we go. Um, I think that will do it for us. So uh, when you're factoring solving, just make sure everything's in standard form. Everything is on one side of the equation. Um, do an x factor or a factor using GCF. And then use that zero product property. Set each factor equal to zero and solve. And that will do it for us today. We'll see you guys next time.